Let's continue our JavaScript shopping cart here. And I promise this time we'll, we'll really start the shopping cart. Okay, so uh, now that we've got everything under our belt here, let's get started. Okay, so how are we going to deal with this? Um, this will evolve over time, so we're just going to get some basic ideas down, and then we'll kind of improve and refactor our code to make something really useful by the end. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to think about how we're going to structure our shopping cart. So essentially what I want to do is I want to create an array that's going to be called cart and it's going to contain all of the shopping cart items. Okay, so in the shopping cart when we display um, you know, a list of things that maybe are in your cart, um, we'll need to display the name of the item, the price, and maybe the count, which is maybe how many of the item you have in your cart. Okay. So really, you know, each item in the array here, right? Imagine that each one of those question marks is one item in my shopping cart and I have three items. Really, each one of these is going to be this whole list of stuff. Name, price, count, name, price, count, name, price, count. And really, each one of these elements right here is going to have to have a value associated with it. So name might be, you know, uh, you know, brush, and price might be, you know, a dollar ninety nine, and uh, count might be, you know, one, right? And that doesn't really work. We can't really add that to an array, but we can do it as a um, as an object, right? Let me go back to what I had before. So really, what I want to do is. I want to do something like this, right? I want to have an object in there and then have the name be brush, comma, price is, you know, $1.99, comma, and then count is, you know, maybe three, right? And then we'll do the same for each, each item. And you can see that would be pretty you know, ugly if we had to type it out right here, right? So what we'll do is we'll have the computer do it for us, right? And we'll kind of make some helper, you know, um, code to kind of make it easy for us to insert these items, right? So that's going to be the general structure. And we could add more items here. Maybe, maybe every, you know, shopping cart item also needs an ID, right? You know, just some sort of code number or something that, that we can use to identify it, um, you know, and, and maybe we could put fit, fit a total cost in here or something, right? You know, we could always calculate that later, right? So anyway, so there's our cart. And so how are we going to define this object? Well, what we're going to do is this. We're going to say um, item, right? And I'm going to declare a variable for item. And this will be sort of a... Um, well, they'll call it they'll call it a class in some languages, but essentially it's going to be sort of a little factory that's going to make, um, you know, item objects for us, right? And it's going to work like this. Item is going to be equal to a function, and this is another way of defining a function, right? Maybe they call this a function literal, right? So we say you know some variable equals function, and this is essentially the same as saying, you know function like this, right? With the name after the word function. Okay, so those are essentially the same thing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put some parameters in here. So when you define your function, maybe you can pass the name, the price, and the count. Okay, um, so there we go, right? And then inside here, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use this, this special keyword called this, okay? And what's going to happen here? So I'm going to say you know this dot name equals name, this dot price equals price, and this dot uh, count equals count, okay? So this is another one where I didn't um, I didn't talk about this one other little feature here, right? This, okay? When I create the function and I set it up in this way, right? With, uh, you know, 
you know, item equals function, and then I use the keyword this here. Um, what I'm doing is effectively creating a system that will generate an object. So it doesn't show it here, but if we use this syntax, if we say, you know, um, var, you know, um, you know, a equals um, new item, okay, what's going to happen is the computer's going to create an object or JavaScript's going to create an object like this with name, some value, price, and some value, and uh, count, and some value, right? And uh, what we'd have to do is assign the name, price, and count because that's where these values would be coming from. So if I put in, you know, brush and price $1.99 and count of one, then um, let me move that over a little bit, right? Okay, then this would end up being, you know, brush $1.99 and count of one. Okay, so when I set up this function here and assign it to item, right, it's going to create an object. This represents that object like itself right and when we say this dot some property name then those are going to be the names of the properties here and then these variables name price and count are going to be the values that you pass to the function through the parameter variables okay so you know don't don't trust me for this right let's do a quick test right so here i'll say you know a equals new item you know and it'll call this function, we'll pass it brush for name, 199 for price, one for count, and then I'm telling you it's gonna make an object that looks like this, right? Let's put that over here. But don't believe me, let's test it out, right? So we'll do console log, and then we'll say, you know, A, right? So remember before when we, when we logged an object, it kind of showed the whole thing in the console, right? Let's give it a test. So we'll go back to our you know, to our browser and refresh, and there it is, item. That's the type of object it is, and then it's got a name, a price, you know, and a count, right? So, uh, so there you go. So now we got a system where, you know, every time we need to make, you know, a, a, um, you know, a shopping cart item, we can make that shopping cart item by, you know, calling new item. Right? And that's a lot easier than us writing the code. So let's try and add a couple items to our shopping cart, right? So what if I say, you know, cart dot, let's actually do this. Let's say, uh, well, I guess we'll do it this way, cart dot, because there's a bunch of ways we can do this, right? But we'll do cart dot push, and then we can create a new item like right in cart. Now, notice I used an uppercase letter for the word item, and that's sort of a convention when you create a class or you name you know, a type of object, then you use an uppercase letter. When you're actually creating the object in a variable, right, you're adding it to a variable, then that variable is lowercase, right? So the actual instance here is what we would call this. This would be an instance of the item, right? An instance of this item class, right, would be A, right? And uh, so A right here would be lowercase, right? So let's imagine here we also want to make, you know, an apple. And it's probably worth 2, 13. And maybe we only need one of those in our, um, in our shopping cart. Right, so there we go. So now we've added an item to the shopping cart. And maybe, you know, for fun, we'll say shopping cart dot push. And we can push the A the item that we created up here, the brush right? Maybe we should even change that. Maybe we should just call this brush, and then we know it's a brush, right? Yeah, there we've added brush, right? So our, our cart should contain apple and, and brush, right? Um, let's check it out, right? Let's do console dot log cart, right? So we'll save that, and then um, I'll click on Chrome here, and we'll refresh it. 
Oh, so now we got item, item, and when I open it up, I've got one item. This is an item class, and it's an apple. And then if I open up the other one, you know, it's an item, and it's a brush. Right? Okay, so you kind of see how this is going to work, right? We're going to make this shopping cart, and then anytime we want to add an item to the cart, we're going to make a new item here, right? And what we're really going to do is we're going to use this as sort of the basis for our for our cart system. And we're going to add various functions here that are going to work with the cart. And we're going to need some functions that do various processes, right? And we'll go over that. Maybe I'll, I'll save that and we'll start that in another video, right? But this is, this is sort of the basic mechanic that we're going to use here, okay? Uh, thanks for watching. I hope that's helpful to someone.